Hey, what's up, YouTube? Garatha here. So today, I'm going to go over my Toto build. I've been asked a lot of questions about this. I promised you guys a Toto build guide for the past couple weeks. Today's video is going to be about Toto and everything about Toto. I'm going to go through the full tournament. I'll like talk you guys through it, my thought process, look at the POB. I'll talk about the budget. I'll talk about the min max options, all that good stuff. I made a POB with some notes and a POB with the starting out tree and the end game and max tree. I also decided to do a experiment with Tota where I kept track of everything from rank 100 to 2000. I put everything in a separate quad tab, priced everything, and I'll show you guys the result of that near the end of the video. Before we get into the video, let's talk about the sponsors of the video. Dungeon Hunter 6. Dungeon Hunter 6 is a new game in the Dungeon Hunter series. This game is a free to play mobile ARPG with the unique hero collector feature and it's set in a stunning fantasy style. Gameplay features a very fast-paced, hack-and-slash combat style with various builds and skills that you can utilize as you fight bosses. The game is absolutely free to play, you can download it now using the link below in my description, or you can scan the QR code on the screen if you're being on a PC. The bosses are different in this game. The core feature in this game is, when you kill a boss, it's not the end. Every boss you want to defeat, the game has a unique mechanic by which you can not only loot, ride, and fly them, but you can also summon up to three of them onto the battlefield to become members of your squad. You can make them follow you anywhere and perform combo skills, as well as even shapeshift into them to harness the power they have. Very cool mechanic that I haven't really seen before, and there's over a hundred uniquely designed bosses to conquer and explore, as well as new classes and units that are updated monthly. You can download the game now for free on both Android and iOS. Use the link in my description, or scan the QR code if you're viewing on a PC. You get a special starter pack worth $50 if you use my link which includes 10 summoning scrolls, 1 SSR Lieutenant, 1 accessory pack. You can also use your game account to enter the Launch Lucky Sun event for free to win great prizes like iPhone 15 Pro Max, PS5, Apple Watch, and more starting October 15th. Make sure you check out the description below for more details. Alright, so I figured the best way to show off the character is just go through like a quick tournament and just talk about the character while I'm doing it. I'm kind of like my general strategy. So when I'm doing a tournament, the first thing I look at is obviously the rewards. It's not the most important thing, though. I'm looking to fight certain guys at certain times. Like, Ahuana, for example, has the best reward here. Generally, I don't want to fight Ahuana early on because she has a really good, unique tattoo. Ideally, we don't fight Ahuana or Akiyaho. Akiyaho, in, hard in hardcore at least, has a really extensive cold dress tattoo. And, yeah, every boss has their own, like, unique tattoo and their own, uni own unique item as well. So I'm going to fight, uh, it doesn't really matter here, let's fight this guy. That's pretty easy. Generally when I'm looking at this, I want to have one guy in Defender. Just in case I somehow die and the enemy is like somehow channeling on my totem. So I want to have one Defender just in case that happens. Otherwise it doesn't really matter. And it really doesn't matter as much this type of build, like what you're doing with your, your team. I generally put everyone on blinking as soon as possible. And have like the one attacker or something. Fire breathers are pretty bad in general, but like it doesn't really matter too much for this character. Yourself. I'll show you why. We're gonna do a voice here in the middle, and yeah, that's it. Basically, you wanna fight, you wanna kill the uh, flankers first if you can help it. Like, this is a flanker. Okay, is that already? At this point, we already won. I can kind of talk about the passive tree, I guess, while my team's winning. The build's so insane that I can just like put a voice here down and they all just get suck. So my team can just win. The uh, most important thing on the passive tree is the max cold, or the min cold damage thing. Chills with your hits always reduce action speed by 10%. We're looking for that. That's like the most important thing. And you want to run that with a black cold damage tattoo. This gives us a base cold damage, so all of our hits are chilling. Then we're scaling up the, uh, the chill with the chill effect on the passive tree as well. We have 27% chill with our Inserting Arrow. Past that, you're looking for Dual Curse, and later on, Curse Effect. Early on though, like, these are going to be like the last damage you take, basically. Like these Curse Effect clusters over here. We're looking for the Wizards of Doom for additional Curse, and that's it early on. I'll show you guys the Passive Tree PUB, and I'll show you guys like the early PUB and like the endgame PUB. This is more of a min-max PUB right now. Or character. Like, I've been playing this character for a bit, so it's like pretty min-max at this point. Uh, past that, we're looking for Suppression on the tree. This is for phase acro. Our character has 1 HP. This is a fully evade capped character. Spell block cap. And block slash spell dodge cap. 
So we just capped everything, and we have 1 HP. Basically anything kills us though. If we get hit, we die. Which includes like dots and stuff as well. So I guess we won this round, I'll continue onwards. Generally I don't buy in between rounds, but you can buy early on especially. Because once you start making the character, the hardest part will be the very beginning. This is because you have less passive points and your gems aren't fully leveled yet. It's kind of funny, but the character, it stays the same throughout the entire thing, right? Like, you don't get any weaker. The enemies are getting, you're getting stronger and the enemies are staying the same, basically. So here, I'm looking for eliminating next loss. I want to make sure I fight someone who doesn't have that. So for example, Tawa Han Hanaku or Gilova or Comb. And this is best rewards, so I'll take this one here. Just like that. Set these guys wherever. It doesn't really matter. If you want to actually, like, go for an enemy, you want to go for the flankers first. This is because, generally, the flankers will get past your voice here occasionally. Or, like, the attackers on the top bottom side. I like to throw in a uh, voice here near the middle. Generally, my voice here has enough AoE. It'll hit everything. But, yeah, sometimes the flankers will get through. You can kind of see that uh, at the point my build's at, I don't really have to do anything. I can kind of just AFK and I'll just win. My character is pretty min max at this point though. I do have the traitor on this keystone here. This isn't required when you start off. It's really nice though to have permanent flask up time. But it's not required. You can just get more passive points for flask charges like replenishing remedies, a flask cluster. This is really nice though. I recommend you get this when you can. Probably be like afford it after a couple of totas. Because you get a lot of currency from Tota. Eliminate next loss. Wanna eliminate comb probably here. Ahana is still not eliminated. That's good. Akiyaro unfortunately got lost. I guess I'll buy real quick. Like I said though, it doesn't really matter. You don't have to do that. Like comb. You guys have Ravager on Defender. These can be a bit annoying because they have so many hits. They kind of sometimes you'll get hit by if you send it. One of the monsters you want to look out for. Begin. The other monsters you're looking out for are Akiyaho and Yotola. Dots are going to one-shot you if you get hit by them. So generally you just don't want to get hit by dots. Try to avoid those monsters. And the tidal waves. Like that tidal wave right there. Also hits a, a lot of times. And this means you have a higher chance of getting hit. Any hit kills you. Want to avoid the, the tide callers as well. And yeah. Generally I... Die very rarely during this. I say that and I die instantly. This usually happens. But I mean, if you're playing safe, you shouldn't really be dying that much. Just put a voice here down. Let your let your team kind of do the killing. Or like the totem killing. You can find their voice here out and just slow monster sound, and your team will win for you, basically. We're CIEB, so it might confuse some people. We have one HP, we die in one hit, but generally it doesn't matter. We're EB, so we actually can cast our spells. Void Sphere costs a lot of mana. Like 310 mana for one Void Sphere cast. So yeah, it's quite extensive. We got a Divine Orb here. Uh, these are pretty common in Tota. Like I said, I got 200 Divine in like... Like two days. I think it's like two days for me to get a... Uh, from 100 to 2000. I mean, it was like 16 hours a day. But yeah, it was, it's pretty insane how much currency you make from it. I didn't even find a Hinokor's Lock. Or um, Defiance of Destiny, which are like the two most expensive items. I didn't find either of those. I think kind of lucky though, and I got um, some Squire cards. Some Squire cards, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, I think my RNG was like pretty average, probably. I'll show you guys like some footage of like the. I kept track of everything and I just wrote everything, everything down. I had a quad tap of everything in it. I'll show you guys all that as well, so you guys can kind of see like, what we got and what you can kind of expect. Sometimes the monsters get through and it's kind of annoying, but go for the flankers and win pretty easily. Generally, I don't defend that much, but you can kind of stop them from attacking if you're worried about it. Like I said, this is going to be the hardest at the very beginning when your gems aren't leveled up and you have less passive points. It just gets easier and easier as you play the character. Now my character is super min max, I have like ashes on. This is not for this character, it's for another character I'm playing. But I kind of just put it on when I'm doing Tota. So Lazwar is the, the uh, one you'll probably be using most of the time. For most people. <laughs> you don't need Dialys either. We're using uh, Dialys now, but you can use like Fox Shade, like Queen of the Forest. The most expensive item to start out with is probably Widow Hail. 
These can be expensive for good rolls. Um, the, the lower rolls are pretty pretty cheap though. Basically, this is so you have more block and spell block from rear guard. And then you have spell block on boots and Marcus submissions. These are like a couple chaos. These are like just cursing on hit, basically. Then we have the ailment effect. Gloves. These are basically just so your chills are bigger and you get ES. So it's not really that important. It's pretty nice. And the ascent from flesh. Just some boost speed and some evasion. Nothing too crazy. The helmet could be Gorgon's Gaze. This is the item from the Pillars of Rune map. Um, it's quite good to freeze the bosses or petrify the bosses, but it's not required. I just have like a random strength helm with like some mana reservation. Just, like I said, you don't really need that much for this to work. I did kind of max it a bit though because I just I spun them in max things, I guess, and it made it a lot easier when I actually wanted to start kind of chilling. I was mostly doing this off stream after a certain point. Like it was so easy to do, and like it's kind of boring to stream it. And I would just generally just like do a Toto while I'm like doing something else, and just throw a voice through out occasionally, watch a YouTube video or something. Yeah, it's pretty easy. I'll show you guys the, the like level 69 tree, which is where I started the character. I did my uber lab at 69. I leveled with a uh, lane arrow and trap and blissa with return proj with a doom fletch, which is actually pretty good for leveling. But yeah, you don't need uber lab even. I never bother with pantheons, for example. You don't need that much. Now, there's a couple other ascendancy options. You could play a gladiator. Gladiator would be pretty good for max block, but it starts in a weird spot on the tree, so I don't think it's even that good. And there's Elementalist. Elementalist is probably the best, like, min-max character, because you get some more chill effect from the, uh, the Elementalist node. Um, but like I said, it's not really required. You see, I can kind of, like, AFK these matches. I just, like, throw a Void Sphere out occasionally, and we kind of just win. Um, here's another part of the tournament. So we're ending on round 6. This is what happens when you go for, like, everyone that hasn't lost yet, basically. But at the last reward, you get, like, the unique item, potentially, or the unique tattoo. Or like whatever boss you're fighting it's not guaranteed it's a chance but you can re-roll the, the uh, reward if you don't get it on the first try for example i got 13 scours here and i haven't lost yet so i could lose this round on purpose by logging out and re-roll this reward which i'll do here actually so we do the uh let the match start and log out and you log back in and go back to the tota and the reward will be re-rolled at this point I'll go ahead and buy some units while I'm at it. Not required, but it'll just make it easier. Like I said, for this build, it doesn't really matter what you're doing with units. There is one caveat to this, though. When you're one, when you're going up against turtles, we didn't actually run into a turtle this time. There is a couple of options to fight turtles, though. Unfortunately, we didn't get the reward we wanted. But yeah, the turtles. Um, running high damage escort units can help a lot because you can kind of. Just kill them. The we have a totem set. We have a uh, sorry. We have a high impact mine setup. This is for actually killing turtles. We basically throw mines and make the monsters take more damage. And it's portal, so it doesn't cost any mana because portal is free. So we just get the mine debuff while uh, not spending any mana, which is pretty nice for killing turtles. The other option is obviously just log out. If you don't have a lost yet, you can just log out to save time. Or you can rush the turtle before it gets its protect off. They only cast it when they're defender. So if you can rush it down and, and start channeling on it. If you don't interrupt the cast of the channel. Like you continue channeling and holding left click down. Even if it puts the protect up. If you don't get stunned you can kill the, the totem before. And then it'll go away. So there's a couple options there. You can actually kill it though if you're in a situation where you must win. The portal mine, high impact mine tech actually helps quite a bit. And yeah, the rest of the... I'll look at PUB for the rest of the gear, and I'll talk about some gear options in PUB, along with, like, the gym setups, and more of the passage tree. We kind of see, like, I wasn't really paying attention to this tournament at all, and we kind of just, just won, basically. Oh yeah, the death guide. So, death guide totems, this is why you're CI, actually. You don't take any damage from Chaos. So against this boss, for example, or this totem, for example, we just don't take any damage, which is nice. Yeah, I kind of just, uh... Well, totem. But yeah, the high impact, high impact mine is actually quite good. You can kind of see the boss will start dying, actually. I just wanted to kill this boss, for example. I don't really do any damage myself, but you make your minions do a lot more damage, basically. Yeah, here we, here we go. We won. Easy. 
Unfortunately, I did not. Oh my god, the mind orb. This is uh, probably above average, maybe a below average. Every tournament takes like eight to ten minutes, though, I'd say. I felt it was showing this as a big item, which it's not really. I'm not up to that yeah, just yet. Bas that's basically a full tournament with this character. Yeah, let's uh, look at the PUB now. The PUB! So let's talk about the PUB a bit. This is the uh, starting PUB. This is level 69. When I started playing Toto on my character, I leveled with Lightning Arrow and Shrapnel Blissa, like I said before. Not going to put that into the PUB, but you can kind of level whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. That worked out well for me, though. Um, you don't even need Uber Lab. Some people really prefer getting everything they can, though, so Uber Lab before you start doing Toto. Maybe just get carried through it if you want, if you're in Trade League. Uh, same with Pantheons. I mean, if you want Pantheons, you should probably get them before you respect to 1 HP. The tree, not too complicated. Chill stuff, curse stuff, suppression stuff, some flash stuff. Like I mentioned before, Gladiator is an option. This is for the max block. I think it's a bad idea, though. You're in a bad spot on the tree. Hard to get curse effect. Hard to get the endgame stuff. Elementalist is probably the best, like I mentioned as well. This is because of Draper Winner. This is 40% chill. And you have more AoE. So if you really want to min-max your Toto character and use like Ashes and Dialas and all that stuff, maybe go Elementalist. I like Pathfinder though, it's super budget. You get permanent flask up time, which you don't have in other classes. It's better than Raider even for like move speed. The Quartz Flask gives you a lot of spell dodge. Um, yeah, it's just generally just a really nice class to play. And that's why I chose Pathfinder. The endgame min-max tree, I have a Evade Watcher's Eye with a Clarity Mind Spanner. If you're wondering why I'm running Clarity, that is why. It's not required at all. Definitely don't need that. And I'm running Kineticism. This is from the Siege Cluster Drill. This gives me Knockback and Bleed slash Maim. This is really nice because I can drop Knockback off my Ensnaring Arrow and run additional Accuracy. You actually do need Accuracy. So you'll need to get Accuracy on the tree if you don't have this. Like I said though, not a big deal. I don't even really attack anymore. I Ensnaring Arrow occasionally, but it's just not a big deal. Occasionally you can Ensnaring Arrow just for Mirage Archer to go off. Um, for the gear, all of that's very cheap. I mean, other than Ashes. If you're using some Lazar, which is like the budget version, it's like 1C, a couple 1C rings, 1C belt. Uh, Rainbow Strike can be pretty expensive if, if it's a perfect roll, but it's pretty cheap otherwise. 1C gloves for this chill effect, basically. Um, you can use Fox Shade or Queen of the Forest for the chest piece. Doesn't really matter, it just gives you more evasion and some move speed. Both these are pretty good. Dials, if you're min-max, this is for um, making your quality Void Sphere, like Phantasm Void Sphere being way better. This is Void Sphere uh, Pulse Frequency, basically that tick rate makes it tick faster and pull more mobs in. And we have Intensify, second one, uh, increased duration, enhanced, increased AoE. Yeah, basically AoE and tick rate, and second one gives you two charges, increased duration is obviously good. Uh, the helmet, like I mentioned before, Gorgon's Gaze is really good. This is not that expensive normally. It might be kind of expensive now, though. I'm not sure. I didn't even bother using it, personally. This will allow you to uh, freeze bosses at the end, though, for example. If you're fighting, like, one boss and it's only the only monster remaining, you can kind of freeze it and channel all the totems. This is quite good. I'm just using a Strength Helmet with some Reservation. That's all I'm using. It's like, like a one Rage Essence or something. Uh, Rear Guard's pretty cheap, unless it's a perfect roll. Uh, you kind of want 15 spell block, ideally. I don't even have one on my character, but I have some spell lock tattoos. I didn't even mention tattoos. The only really important one is the flat gold damage one, though. The rest of them are kind of whatever. Didn't even bother tattooing most of my character. I mean, you could go like Moose Seed, Blast Effect Duration. Lots of things you can do with those. Um, and Phase Run. Phase Run is pretty nice. Just luck look at. Run faster. Frostblink is really cool because you if you get stunned on a totem, you actually can Frostblink out of it. And it's like super desynky though, so it's kind of weird. But yeah, Frostblink is pretty good. It's also good for killing the traps from the trapper mob. So you like see a bunch of traps on the ground, you kind of Frostblink to destroy them. Yeah, that's the gym setup and the tree setup, and that's pretty much everything, I think. I Yeah, the character's not super complicated, and it's very cheap. Okay, and for the results of 100, rank 100 to 2000. This is pretty much everything I found while doing rank 100 to 2000. I was going to use PB stack to keep track of it and things like that, which is a website that just kind of tracks your stash and tells you how much everything's worth. Unfortunately, we're playing hardcore and it doesn't track everything properly, so I had to do it manually. And at the end, I got about 200 divine worth of things. 
after I calculated everything. I'll show you guys the footage of me checking the sash out and hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. Right, I'll take a look at the tally here. 3,000 chaos orbs, 113 period of vines, uh, the cheater card, nurse cards, seven keystone tat tattoos, warrior's tail, regretting lenses, lots of things, two pro tattoos, one to 2,000 right here. I sold a lot of tattoos on the way, that's why I got so much chaos. I had to convert some chaos into divines as well because I had too many, otherwise I wouldn't fit in a quad tab.